I wanted to go over one of the most critical pieces of a gear that I carry, and that's a sleeping bag. And uh, this happens to be a uh, winter bag. Maybe you're thinking of buying a winter bag. You want to expand your camping into three seasons, four seasons, you know, really early spring when it's below freezing. Uh, fall, like now it's the middle of October and uh, the temperatures are going down into the 30s. They could go much lower. I'm up here in the Adirondacks, New York State, and uh, it was 28 last week. Now, um, the prior trip I did, it was part of this trip. I did a fly into a lake and uh, I was out there for five days, four nights, and it rained like hell. So the sleeping bag is a critical component there. Uh, and keeping dry, 38 degrees, 36 degrees, rain, that's a hypothermia combination right there. And uh, keeping dry and keeping warm are essential. So the tent is another critical piece of equipment. The tent agrees to keep you out of the wind and out of the rain, and the sleeping bag agrees to keep you dry. Now, you need to take care of your sleeping bag and your tent. They're not pieces of gear that you can abuse and misuse and expect them to keep you alive. It's just not that, that's just not the relationship this is. So let's look at this sleeping bag. I, I don't know if the sleeping bag is available anymore, uh, but I think the points that I'm gonna make are generic to all sleeping bags or most sleeping bags. And they might be things that you wanna consider looking at when you buy a sleeping bag. Above all, keep your sleeping bag dry. If you put it in a nylon, bag to carry to stuff sack keep some plastic bags around if it gets really wet out you want to put that sleeping bag in a plastic bag you don't want it to get wet so there's synthetic bags and there's goose down bags this happens to be a goose down bag it's a vintage bag it's not new hasn't gotten a huge amount of use i only use it in these cold winter trips and late fall uh, the bag that i use the most is good for like 20 degrees or whatever this one's good for about minus 20. Uh, it's a good sleeping bag, and I'll show you why it's a good sleeping bag. So you can see this goose down bag has a lot of loft. Loft is the height, right? That's the goose down puffing up, and it's very compressible. Uh, you'd look for loft in a synthetic bag also. Now, a goose down bag has some advantages for me, and disadvantages. Uh, one of them is it's somewhat adjustable temperature-wise. Now, this is good for minus 20. Uh, you can take the bag... And this bottom part, when you lay on it, it provides no insulation. So what you do is you can take the bottom and you can shake it. And that will shake the down up around, up into here. And that will give you more loft on top. If you're in warmer weather, you can shake it in the opposite direction and move the down below the, uh, the bag to the part that you lay on that will compress and give you less insulation. So the bag can be modified for certain temperature ranges. You can't do that with a synthetic bag, but synthetic bags are, you know, they're good on their own. You know, they're great. Uh, you wanna make sure you have a good draft tube. Here's the zipper, and you wanna make sure you have a good draft tube. The draft tube seals the bag. When you close it, this extra area here will keep out the cold. And there's another one up, uh, up on top. So that's a really good seal, and that'll keep out the cold. Now, it's my responsibility as the owner of this bag to make sure the down hasn't shifted and to shake it around and make sure that this draft tube, you know, over years of use, <coughs> has an even distribution of down and still puffs up and still does what it's supposed to do. So there's some owner responsibility here. Same with the top part. Now, Around the neck, you're trying to conserve heat. And around the neck, you ought to have a draft tube. And this one has some Velcro on it, and it will Velcro to the top draft tube. This literally seals around your neck, and there's a draw cord here, and it will pucker it up. Now, don't underestimate these. These are really important features to have on a sleeping bag. Um, most sleeping bags, you know, cold weather bags should come with this, but just make sure your consideration does. You want that to be a nice tight seal. You can't believe the difference that makes when it's really cold and there's some air leaking into the sleeping bag. It could be the difference between shivering all night and being nice and warm. Also, you know, you have the hood. The hood is designed to come up around your head and it's got a draw cord too, so just your face will stick out. You know, you put on a balaclava and get in this thing and it's gonna be nice and warm. 
Now, this sleeping bag is made out of Gore-Tex, and that means it sheds water. What it doesn't mean is that it's waterproof. You see this stitching holes here will leak water. But if you get a little spill, if you get a few drips in the tent from moisture condensation, uh, the Gore-Tex will help. It's, uh, it's not meant to camp out in the rain, that's for sure. Uh, but it's a big, big asset for me. Gore-Tex also provides a huge amount of windproofness. Now, when you're sleeping in here, your body's giving off moisture. And you'll see in the morning, just from your breathing in the tent, uh, on a really cold day, you'll have frost all over the outside of the bag. And that's okay. That's not bad. The water is just condensing there. As you're breathing out, the water is condensing. You really want to air out your bag every day if possible. And before you go camping, take it out and fluff it up. You know, uh, whether it's synthetic or down, you want to air it out. I read a book by Will Steger going to the South Pole with dog sled. And uh, there they had these, you know, super duper sleeping bags that were synthetic. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's synthetic or down, but in their case, it was so cold they couldn't air out the bags. And the bags got built up of moisture to the point where they were like a frozen rock when they would get in them. And they had to thaw them out to spend the night in the damn thing with their body heat, which is not nice. The zippers broke because they were so stiff. So um, it can be a problem, you know, wherever possible and there's sunshine on a nice day, air out your bag. I open mine up, I let it air out. So the other thing that's a really good feature, I haven't seen it on many sleeping bags, but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it exists. Up here, you know, your head's gonna be sticking out of here into this, uh, into this hood. This sleeping bag, if you notice, the red part is Gore-Tex, the black part is breathable nylon. Now, this bag, up around where you're exhaling and giving off moisture, is uh, all Gore-Tex up in here. When you pucker this up, right here where your mouth is, and you're gonna be breathing out, this is all Gore-Tex. Now that's a great thing. It won't, get, it won't absorb moisture into the bag from your breathing. And if you can get that feature, if you're a cold weather camper and you can get that feature, definitely look for it, because it's a great thing, and it will uh, keep your bag drier. Uh, even though in the morning when I get up, I still have to dry the sleeping bag out from moisture my body pumped in here. But uh, this prevents external moisture from respiration coming in here. Now I've had other bags that don't have this waterproofness up here. And uh, sure enough, when you wake up in the morning, this will be pretty damp and wet. It'll be damp and wet when you wake up anyway, but the difference is the moisture will be on the outside of the bag. It won't soak in and pass through to this. A wet goose down bag is, uh, is almost useless. It, it provides little to no insulation. And there's little to no insulation on the bottom too. Uh, you shake all that down up on top, you get a good seal on the sides, and your, your, your warmth is coming from the uh, insulation from the foam pad you have under it. That's what's going to keep you warm. So, this, uh, this Thermarest pad, I like these, be the, this is a ridge rest, I think it's called. I like these because they are not like self-inflating. They're a lot larger to carry. They don't weigh very much, but they, uh, they don't go flat. I've had inflatable mattresses fail on me, so I don't trust them anymore. And I don't want to bring glue and uh, patches, and uh, I've had conditions where glue and patches won't work, um, too humid or whatever. Uh, so this is my solution, but I have to tell you, you know, compared to the trailer, uh, it's uh, a little less comfortable. Let's put it that way. This particular bag has loops down here. You can tie it up and hang it to dry it out. Uh, hey, that's about it. It's not rocket science. And, uh, you know, there's other things, you know, you want to look for a good zipper, you know, you want to uh, make sure it's roomy enough for you. You know, people seem to have gotten a lot bigger lately, uh, and uh, you want to make sure it fits you. First night out on a camping trip, you can expect to be cold no matter what your sleeping bag. I have a sleeping bag that's good for 50 below, <laughs> and I'm always cold uh, with that bag the first night out. It's not the sleeping bag. It's that I'm just not used to sleeping in those conditions. Second night out, I'll sleep with the sleeping bag open. You, know, you adjust to it. You adapt. So uh, that's uh, some things I thought that were worth mentioning. You know, if you're a newbie and you're looking at a sleeping bag, uh, those are some nice, nice uh, 
qualities to look for, features. They, uh, they make the difference, you know. This is what stands between you and either a miserable night or uh, an unsafe night. And you wanna make sure it's well taken care of. Of all your pieces of gear, this is the piece of gear you wanna take care of the best. You wanna make sure it's in good shape, aired out, dry, and uh, it'll, it'll do you well. Uh, you know, the tent, same thing with the tent. You want to keep that nice and uh, dry and keep it in good condition. You don't want it to get moldy. You never want to put any of this gear away damp or wet at all. You want to make sure you dry it out good when you get home. So that's all I have to say about that. Having a good time. I'm going to move camp in a little while. I'm going to go to a different area and I'm going to do some mountain biking there and uh, try and get this day underway.